Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at two thrift store finds. The first of which is this Compaq Armada 7710MT, which is a pretty old laptop of course. The other one is a Toshiba Satellite T1900. That's the more interesting one of the two, so we'll take a look at that last. So, I found these at a thrift store. This one and the Toshiba for 5 euros each, they were untested. They both work fine, at least they power on, they boot into an operating system and uh, all that jazz. Uh, they have one thing in common, both have broken floppy drives, that's very annoying. Uh, of course they bo also both have the uh, defective batteries, but that's not a big deal. But uh, at least they both boot up, have working displays, working drives now, and uh, working memory, all that jazz. So first, this compact then. This is the Armada 7710MT. This features a Pentium MMX CPU. I believe this is a 150 megahertz, but it could also be a 166. I'm not 100% sure yet. I've only powered this on uh, for one evening to reinstall the operating system on an SD card because uh, it did have a, uh, at least I thought it had a defective drive. This is the drive in, in, the, in question here. As you can see, a Seagate Marathon 1.6 gigabyte drive. It is super thick. In fact, let me get another drive here. There we go. This is a regular uh, IDE laptop drive. This is an Hitachi Desk Star. Here is the Seagate again. As you can see, the length of the drives is comparable. So there's the width here. But it's definitely a lot thinner. That's for damn sure. They needed a hell of a lot more platters back in the day to fit the same uh, kind of data density on one drive. So that's fun. So if we take a look around the machine. We don't have much here. We have a uh, vent here. It's not a speaker. Power input because these have built in power supplies. I used to have an Armada 1792DT that also had a. Uh, Built-in power supply, so that's shared across the board. VGA, PS2, docking connector, parallel port, serial port. Uh, this is, of course, the uh, infrared port. Microphone in, headphone jack, line in. So that's pretty much that. On this side, we have the card slots, which we can uh, eject using these little tabs here. Kensington lock slot proprietary connector up here, presumably for stuff like external floppy drives, perhaps even external CD-ROM. And if we open up the whoops, if we open up the unit, on the end there is a little bit, uh, a little bit of slack. Let's put the wire down here. There we go. As you can see, this is really in nice shape here. We're only missing the little uh, thing here that goes on the nipple mouse or track point, whatever you want to call it. Integrated buttons here. And pretty much your other uh, typical compact layout with the four programmable buttons on top. Power button, power slider, volume controls, speakers in the display. This is a 12 inch TFT display in color. And of course the Pentium MMX sticker in pristine shape. So yeah, that's pretty much that. So let's turn on the machine. So we can enjoy all of its goodness. Uh, like I said, I suspected the drive to be bad. I don't know if that's true at all because I was basically focused on the broken floppy drive, but it didn't boot into anything from what I could tell. It just had invalid disk, so I'm assuming the disk is dead. It did spin up though, from what I remember, but uh, you know. So I decided to uh, change out the drive for an SD card to IDE adapter. So put in a 2 gig SD card, put Windows 95 on it. And uh, that's basically what you're seeing here. There we go. I'm not sure if this is full brightness or not, but uh, it is not. But this is. All right. That's a nice little trick. Okay. Does that go away? Yes, it does. Right. So it's a bare bones install of Windows 95. I really can't show you anything here. I'm just going through this uh, as we go. 800 by 600, we have a S3 video card. Don't know if we can get that up here. 
You have the S386 CM65 with two megabytes of onboard memory. That's, I think, oh, the chip type is an Aurora 64V Plus, apparently. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> it does direct draw, so that's something. But we have full 24-bit color on this display, so that's cool. And uh, yeah, I've got all the various uh, compact stuff installed that, it, uh, that I could find. I'll tell you something, getting the operating system on here was quite a bitch, especially the drivers, because, because the floppy drive is broken. I don't know if people know this, but uh, Compaq uses the soft packs, which are self-extracting images, but they self-extract to floppy disks. And because you can't uh, use floppy disks on this machine, because it's pretty much busted, uh, you have to first run the soft packs on a different laptop or a different machine with a floppy drive, copy it to the floppy, then copy from the floppy back to your hard drive, put that hard drive, uh, from hard drive I copied it to a USB stick, I put the USB stick in my main rig with the SD card reader so I could put it on the SD card, put the SD card back in here and we were back in business. It's annoying, it's really annoying. But at least now I've got the operating system running, all of the drivers are installed, the sound is working, the video is working, basically everything is working except for the parallel port, I disabled that, I don't use that at all. So that's all hunky-dory. And that is basically the Compaq Armada 7710 MT. So we can shut that down and now move to the Toshiba, which is a little bit more interesting. And here she is, the Toshiba Satellite T1900. Notice this is not the T1900C, which is the model with the color display. This is the T1900, which has a monochrome display. That's why it's interesting, because it is quite a bit older than the uh, Compact Armada was. This is a 486SX25 machine with 4 megabytes of RAM and the original 120 megabyte hard drive. And it still had its uh, original uh, installation, or at least a really old installation of uh, Windows on here, with MS-DOS 5.0. Here in the front we can see the uh, floppy drive here. This one does not work. I'll have to see if I can replace that. It doesn't really seem like it is a unit that's specific to the machine in the way this is oriented. So I'll have to see if I can do something about that. If not, I will also replace this with an SD card adapter and uh, run the SD card in or compact flash. doesn't really matter to me much. Uh, on this side here we have the battery which can be slid out really easily. Just pull this tab here, push it in and you can pull the battery right out. And uh, this is what it looks like. By the way, if this video sounds and looks a bit different, uh, I'm recording this with my work iPhone 6 using my external uh, level air microphone that uh, has a 3.5mm uh, connector. Uh, I couldn't find the SD card to my main camera, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make do. Anyways, uh, power button is on this side as well. Here we have the power input. And this is another little jack thing. Oh, that's the reset button. All right. On the back, we have a bunch of sliding doors. For now, we can only see the parallel printer port. But if we slide this away, we can also find the serial connector right here. And behind this sliding panel, we have the VGA port. Going to this side, we have the PC card slot, which uh, looks like something like that. Here we have two PS2 ports, one of which is sadly broken, but I've got a serial mouse to use with this machine. And uh, here is another external connector for external peripherals. All right. So let's open up the display. The hinges on this are a lot tighter than on the Compaq. The Compaqs are still pretty good, but this one is definitely a lot stiffer. So there's that. Okay. This time around we have a much smaller display. This is just a 10 inch monochrome display. The keyboard is still in pretty good condition. Keyboards of the laptops of this era are definitely a lot better than the modern day uh, chiclet style. There's a lot more feel, a lot more travel a lot more noise, which I found I find very satisfying indeed. Right, so what I still need to do is plug the damn thing in so we can power it on, because of course the battery is about as dead as uh, all of this guy's friends, so. 
talking about the laptop here, not me. My friends are still very much alive, as far as I know. Uh, let's push the button and see what happens. Like I said, this is a 486SX25 with 4 megs of RAM, 120 meg drive, and it flickers a hell of a lot, so I apologize for that. Of course, the CMOS is also long gone, so we can hop into BIOS here and take a look. Let's see, let's try a little zoom here. Oh, that's excellent. There we go, very legible. BIOS version is 1.3 with 4 megs of RAM, like I said. Display adapter is VGA compatible, which is very helpful. Uh, LCD display mode is set to color for some reason. Let's put that to monochrome. Uh, normal, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm not going to touch any of the other things because I don't need to. Everything else is fine. We need to push the end key to save changes and exit out. Of course, it is passive matrix, very much so. It only has a little beeper, no real sound card. And here we go, booting from MS-DOS straight into Microsoft Windows. At least it used to boot into Windows. Oh, it just skipped the boot screen or it glitched out, whatever. <laughs> Hell if I know. All right, I didn't connect the mouse. That's useful. Oh, well. That's just the stuff that happens sometimes. Um, let me plug in a mouse and uh, we'll take another crack at this. There we go. Now I can use the mouse. And yes, it is ever so glitchy on the display as it is, it is on the camera. And that's a very noisy car. That's always annoying. It is set to monochrome here. It's a bit annoying that the mouse is actually also black. In fact, the colors are totally off now. <laughs> I guess I should have set it to a reverse mode. In fact, let's just try that for good measure. This is a very bare bones install, by the way. There's absolutely nothing in the operating system. Yeah, in fact, let's just honestly leave it at that. There's absolutely nothing in that Windows install that we can really do anything with. Uh, this machine was wiped clean completely. And uh, other than that, it does seem to function pretty well. We still have about 100 Macs free, in fact. We've only used about, uh, well, that would indicate about 20 Macs. Math, stuff like that. So let's... Uh, Turn this one off. There we go. And uh, wrap up the video, I should say. That's too much zoom. There we go. So that's pretty much uh, the conclusion of the thrift store finds, the Toshiba Satellite T1900 and the Armada 7710MT. Um, I'm going to try and think about uh, making a dedicated video for each of the machines to actually show something actually running on them. Um, of course, as usual, I mean, it can take a while, depending on how busy I am and what the weather is doing. But uh, I try, and uh, I'll definitely uh, give it a look and see if, what, if I can uh, dig something interesting up for these machines. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.